everybody, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and this is Little Lino Lobster and today we are talking about yarn over versus yarn under for Amigurumi. We're going to talk about what it is, how to do it, and which one is right for you. As always, you're going to be able to find all the resources in the description box below. I've got a little quiz for you. I've got links to the yarn I used, the hook, the book, all of the important things you're going to find in the description box below. So first of all, are you already on a team? Are you team yarn over? Are you team yarn under? Or are you team, I don't know what in the world you're talking about here. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what yarning over and yarning under actually are. So first of all, I decided to experiment a little bit and I did a yarn under technique for the little lobster here. And of course, this is the pattern from Jan Schenkel from Animal Friends of Pika Pow. I've talked a lot about this this book so if you're interested in checking out that video I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below as well as one of those little cards that's gonna either be over here or over here I'm not really sure which direction it's going to be but you'll be able to check out that video if you're interested in learning more about Pika Pow animals if you don't know them already let's go ahead first of all and talk about what yarning over and yarning under actually is traditionally you learn how to make a single crochet by yarning over but a lot of people have been using the yarning under technique for amigurumi specifically and there's a couple of reasons why the difference between a yarn over and a yarn under stitch is not just in the way it is constructed which I'm going to show you exactly how to do both of them in just a minute you're probably already familiar with yarning over but I'm gonna just do that really quick and then show you how it's different than yarning under but yarning under creates an X shape now traditional yarning over single crochets create a v-shaped stitch you're going to be able to see that these look a little bit more like an X shape and it actually twists the yarn as it comes through the stitch so that part you might not be able to see quite as clearly with this little lobster here just know that those are two of the biggest differences in the way the stitches actually look but there's a whole lot more to discover about these two techniques you wouldn't think there'd be this much to talk about just comparing two of the same single crochets and just how you pull the yarn through but I'm telling you there's a lot to talk about but I've got a little quiz for you who doesn't love a quiz I always love doing little quizzes so I've got a yarn underside and a yarn overside and you're just going to circle which ones apply to you and it will give you an idea of which one should you be looking at because I actually do believe that there is a right one for you I'm gonna give you my opinion and which one is gonna be right for me in just a minute so I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly what yarning over and yarning under look like so I am starting off with just a magic ring I made six single crochet in a magic ring and then I increased to 12 just so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about in the actual way that we typically start amigurumi projects which is in the round so I am using my paint box wool mix Aaron and a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook this is exactly what I use to make little Lino lobster right here so typically for our yarning over we insert our hook under our stitch we come this way we're grabbing our yarn bringing it and yarning over so the yarn is going over our hook now for yarning under we do something just a little bit different we are taking our hook under our stitch as before but now we're grabbing the yarn it's underneath the hook we are pulling through and then we're doing the same thing we're just grabbing it and the yarn will be underneath and we pull through I'm going to show you that again it doesn't look a whole lot different but it actually feels a lot different so our hook is going over but our yarn is under we're yarning under we pull it through and then again we're pulling it through like this now I'd love it if we were in a classroom and I could ask you what do you notice right away 
about the difference with this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about it. I feel like a teacher right now. In school, I'm asking all the students, what do you see is the biggest difference between the yarn over and yarn under and not just the actual technique, but something else that's pretty important. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint to help you to answer the question. So these are both patterns from Animal Friends of Pika Pow 2. This is James Duck and I did James Duck with the yarn over technique and I made little Lena with the yarn under technique. Now I've made a lot of the patterns from the first book and they're all relatively about the same size. One thing that you might notice about these two guys is James Duck is a little bit bigger and it might be hard to tell just because they look about the same size but actually if I had used the yarn over technique to make little Lena lobster he would be bigger. He would probably be about the height that little James Duck's little hat is, he would be bigger. And that's because when you are yarning under, you're actually using less yarn. That's the key to everything with yarning under. That is what makes the yarn over and the yarn under technique really different. It's not just how you make the stitch, but actually what happens when you make that stitch. Because of the yarn under, you are not wrapping the yarn around the hook at all. You are literally just going on top of the yarn and grabbing it so that the yarn is under. So you're using less yarn, which creates a very tight little stitch, which creates a smaller toy, which I actually found really interesting. So these stitches are more of a V shape. If you can kind of see that, I'm going to get a little close up so you can see. And these are more of an X shape. And even if you don't see the V and the X, I think when you look closely, you can actually see the differences in the stitches. Now, what makes that interesting and what makes it something that you might want to think about is that the V shape with the yarn over is a looser stitch. There's more yarn in that stitch, which which can lead to holes. But with the yarn under technique, it's a tight little stitch. There's not a lot of yarn in that stitch and it creates a very dense fabric. So if you have tension issues, say you don't like the way your finished amigurumi look, maybe you find that you have holes or it's just not as tight and you see stuffing through there, I'm going to say that you're probably going to want to do the yarn under technique. But there's a few other things that you need to know about yarning under and we're going to get into them right now. Another really interesting thing about yarning under is when you are changing colors. Actually, it's not just when you're changing colors. The stitches with yarning under sit a little more on top of each other than they do when you yarn over. So crochet stitches do not stand on each other like this. Knitted stitches do, but not crocheted stitches. They lean a little bit. So if you are right-handed, they're going to lean a little bit to the right. And if you're left-handed, your stitches will lean a little bit to the left. Left. So that's why you may notice, especially when you are changing colors, you may notice the color jogs. You can see that the line is going all the way up like that and it's not straight up and down where you changed colors. Now with yarning under, it isn't quite as pronounced as when you are yarning over. So that's one of the benefits of yarning under. Some of the patterns in the Pika Pow books have some color work charts. For the frog, I know the donkey has one. I think in the new pattern, there is the little sheep. It all has some color work charts in them. You'll notice in the color work charts that they are squares that sit right on top of each other, but that's not the way crocheted stitches look. So if that's something that's really important to you, you would rather have those stitches sitting a little bit closer on top of one another, or you are doing a lot of color work. And I don't mean stripes with the changing of stripes. I mean more like the charts that are in the Animal Friends of Pika Pow books, you will likely want to use the yarn under method because it's just a little bit neater. It's just a little bit cleaner and the stitches sit a little bit more on top of each other, even though they still do lean. And you can see that here, they're still leaning, but it's a little bit better than it would be if I had yarned over. So now I've kind of talked about some of the pros of yarning under. I want to give you a little bit of my own personal experience and kind of what I discovered and what my thoughts are on this because I've tried to remain as neutral as possible but I have some pretty strong opinions about this. 
this. When I first started making little Lino here, you start at the very top and you start with the little eyes with your magic rings. And as I was making them, I kept forgetting how to do the yarn under and I naturally wanted to make a yarn over. So that was sort of my obstacle number one. Obstacle number two came when I was able to finally just get in the habit of yarning under. I found that it was hard to do. It was actually a little bit tricky for me and I'm a naturally a tight crocheter. So I have a naturally tight tension when I'm crocheting, which is great for amigurumi. But when I was yarning under, I was finding that this was creating some really tight stitches and I was struggling actually to get the hook through. So I was having to loosen up just a little bit with it, but I started to notice really quickly that it was bothering my wrist. My wrist started to get really, really sore. And I've talked about the fact that I've had pain with crocheting amigurumi and I will leave a link for that video as well because if you're experiencing any kind of pain when you are crocheting, I want to share what I've learned with you. I actually went to an orthopedic doctor and I had physical therapy and I really learned a lot and I did some own experimenting on myself and I want to share that information with you. You'll find a link to that video in the description box below as well. It was a lot more painful for me than yarning over. I could work on this in little bits at a time but I just started to notice the pain in my wrist and eventually I started noticing it in both of my elbows which is my main problem area are my elbows. I have tendonitis that I usually manage pretty well but this really really aggravated my tendonitis. So I would just say if you have any kind of joint issues, repetitive motion injuries, you find discomfort when you're crocheting, I'm going to recommend maybe don't do the yarn under. If you really love the look, maybe you could do it at small bits of a time. But I actually got to the point where I finished the body. I made myself finish the body because I didn't want to abandon this mid project and have half of the body be in yarn under and half of the body be yarn over because that would have really messed with the tension. He would have been smaller up here and then larger down here and I didn't want that to happen. But the proportions of this little guy are off and I will tell you why. It's because the claws, the tail, and the feet, I ended up having to do yarn over. I could not do yarn under anymore. It was just too painful. And I know that the author and designer of Animal Friends of Pika Pal, she actually does the yarn under. So if you ever look at her photos really closely, you can see that she has those stitches that look like this. So the little X stitches rather than the V stitches. So she really likes that yarn under technique. But for me, I could not do it. It was so uncomfortable for me. So because of that, I'm probably never, ever, ever going to do it again. So as a recap, just so you know, you can get the little quiz in the description box below by clicking on that link, scroll down a little bit and you'll find the box where you can put your email address in and I will send you the little yarn over versus yarn under quiz. Just remember that for yarning under, the pros are that you get nice tight stitches. The stitches stand a little bit more on top of one another. There's less leaning than with yarning over. You also get little X shaped stitches and color work is just a tad bit neater when you yarn under. You will end up with a smaller toy, which isn't really a negative thing at all, and you will have a nice dense fabric. So if you have loose tension, yarning under is going to be really great. But the negatives of yarning under are if you experience any kind of pain, if you have a naturally tight tension in your crocheting, you may find this very difficult to do. I found it just difficult to do in general. It wasn't as easy. It wasn't as smooth. It's actually considered the wrong way to single crochet, although you can use it however you want. It's fun to experiment. It's fun to do something a little bit different to get a different technique. But if you have any kind of joint issues, any kind of pain issues, you struggle with it a little bit or a lot like I do, I wouldn't recommend it. But those are just my two cents. I would love to know what you think. I would love to know if you are a young yarn under fan, if you're a yarn over fan, or whether or not you even knew there was a difference before. But I do know that there are some designers that really love the yarn under technique. I know that Jennifer from Crochet to Play, she has beautiful amigurumi designs. She does the yarn under technique and it works great for her and her toys are beautiful. She has perfect stitches. It just wasn't gonna work for me. I actually can see a lot of mistakes on him. It's not as smooth. 
I, some stitches are a little bigger, some are a little smaller, and some of that is just due to I didn't practice enough. But some of that is because it was just hard. I just found it very difficult. Now that could just be me personally, but I just want you to be aware of the pain issue. I actually found that that was a common thing when I was looking up some things about yarning under. That was one of the little things that people said, hey, by the way, I had a little wrist pain. I've had a little pain with this. So just know that going into it. Lino and I would like to thank you for stopping by the Le Petit Saint Crochet YouTube channel today. I really hope that you found this information valuable. I really had fun experimenting with this yarning over and yarning under technique. Even though it gave me a little bit of trouble, I'm still glad I actually did it. It's always fun to try new things, to experiment a little bit, and discover new things about yourself and about crocheting. As always, please hit that like button and that subscribe button to my channel. And if you would leave a comment, that would be wonderful. I'd love to know your opinion about yarning over and yarning under. And as always, please stay safe out there and happy stitching.